Hello again viewers and greetings fellow space travelers, this is Thorn of Night, and welcome to episode 5 of my new tree breeding guide for Minecraft for forestry and extra trees. Uh, and in this episode, we are going to be going over the branch of trees following the balsam fir, which comes from the common alder in, uh, that I uh, displayed in the previous episode. And the trees in this branch turn out to be quite large and fluffy, so a lot of them are going to need some breathing room in order to get them to grow. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start here with the balsam fir. And it will require the common alder and the mundane larch. The larch uh, was covered in one of my other videos. And the common alder is in the one just before this one. Uh, but the balsam fir here is a tree that can grow up to a height of 8 with this little sticky out bit there. It does need a little room to grow. At least the one if you want to get most of the leaves. But... To fully accommodate it, because you can see there some of them stick out, you're going to need a radius of two out from the sapling uh, in order to get those to grow right. Uh, but what you're going to get out of this is, an, on average, over the uh, course of 20 trees, I, I took an average here, and you will get five logs and about 2.3 saplings, just over two saplings. Uh, so you're pretty much guaranteed to get enough saplings to uh, replant, if not expand, your farm. And eventually it will be a, a sustainable farm that you can run automatically. Uh, but what you'll get from it, from the wood, uh, are these fir wood logs and planks. That's what the uh, bark looks like, that's what the cross section, and that's what the planks look like there. Uh, and here are the saplings, and you can see that they tend to grow pretty close to each other. Uh, and this tree does not give any fruit or nuts or anything like that. It's just the tree. Uh, and it is a tier 4 tree, and what I mean by that is, uh, assuming the core trees, the apple, the, uh, I'm sorry, the oak, the birch, the spruce, and the jungle tree are, are tier 1. The next layer out would be tier 2, tier 3, and this is a tier 4 tree because it uses a tier 3 tree in order to be made. Uh, but let's move on to the next tree here. We have the silver fir, and in order to get this to grow, you're going to need to crossbreed a bull pine, which was also uh, in the mundane larch branch, and the balsam fir, which we just got over there. Uh, these are a little bit fluffier, and they are going to need a little bit more room to breathe. Uh, they can grow to a width of three in all directions, but for sure, in order to make sure that they have room to uh, sprout, you're going to at least need a width of two in every direction from the sapling uh, to get it to work right. And they can grow up to a height of 14. So keep that in mind when you're making your space for these guys. They look really cool, uh, but they do occupy a bit of space here. Uh, on average, you're going to expect to get about 10 logs each. Uh, they they can grow uh, pretty tall there, uh, and just under eight saplings from each one. But since it only takes one sapling to get it, you're definitely going to get a positive return there. Uh, again, there's no nuts or fruit or anything, just these fir wood again, and the saplings from this. And this is a tier five tree, as you can see there. Um, moving on to the next one, this one is even fluffier and. Uh, there's some interesting criteria for it, but I will cover that in a moment. This is called the Great Cedar. You are going to need the Mundane Larch again and the Silver Fir in order to get this guy. Uh, and you will get about 34-ish logs and just over 22 saplings from each tree. Uh, again, there's no uh, fruit or nut that comes from it, but there are plenty of logs and saplings here. And you will get this... Oh, really bright orange cedar. Oh, it's nighttime. Let's make it morning. Uh, this bright orange cedar, you can see the planks and the cross section of the logs, and there's the bark there. Uh, they do grow up to a height of 13, so also keep that in mind for your spacing. And they will also, for maximum growth, you are going to need to have eight spaces between the farthest edge of the sapling and any other item. 
Uh, if you have it any less than that and it, the leaves touch another block or there is a block near them that update anywhere outside of a radius of four from the log, they will start causing additional block updates. So, for instance, one, two, three, four, five, anything from here on out, if I were to punch that, this one would also eventually disintegrate because it detects that there's a block update next by and it says, am I supposed to be here? It checks to see if there's a log nearby. It's five away, so it says, nope, I go away, and it will dissolve. Uh, so if you don't want to have them self-destructing, keep enough space between them and anything else, and that is a space of eight for the maximum width so uh, you might want to keep a space of nine so it doesn't touch anything at all uh, but they do grow up to uh, a height of 13 and as far as i can tell the log here for the top will hey it's raining go away the log at the top uh, will keep the top layer in check uh, and and active so you don't have to worry about that it's just these fluffy bits that stick way out here uh, to a radius of eight. Uh, the tree does require four saplings in order to grow instead of just one, uh, but you can still get plenty of output from that. And it is an end of the line tree. And what I mean by that is the, uh, the tree is not used to create any new species. But that is the great cedar. It is a tier one, two, three, four, five, six tree. Hello. And as you can see, there are plenty of uh, leaf blocks to get saplings from. And that's why it's such a high yield. Um, but also you can see that there, there are plenty of saplings that have not grown into trees. And that's because it checks to see if there's room above the sapling before it grows. And if it doesn't think there's enough room, it just won't sprout one up. So they don't grow too densely, but the leaves just go everywhere. Anyway, moving on to the next one. We have got a another fluffy tree, and this one's fluffier in the vertical direction than the horizontal. We've got the Douglas fir, and you need the silver fir and a red spruce in order to make this. And once again, it's an end-of-the-line tree with a 2x2 two two sapling trunk base, and it can grow up to a whopping 16 tall. And uh, if it is, uh, for some reason, even if there is only room for, say, the 14 or the 13 even tall one, uh, it, it still won't grow uh, unless there is at least a gap for the 15 tall. So do keep that in mind for uh, if you want to have an enclosed area for growing these guys. Uh, it does need a radius of 5 to accommodate the widest possible variation, and there are several variations. And there are a lot of leaves on here. Uh, you can expect to get about 47.4 logs on average. That's over, once again, the course of 20 trees and 24.7 saplings on average. And that's still plenty enough to keep growing. Once again, there's no fruit or, lo or uh, nuts or anything like that. And you'll get this fir log, which has this sort of yellowish uh, core here and, and these planks. And that is what the bark looks like. And this is a tier 2, 4, 6 tree. Uh, and once again, like I said, end of the line there. Next up with these sort of, I guess, uh, almost lime green sap fringe saplings, we've got the western hemlock. Uh, it needs the bull pine and the silver fir to uh, be crossbred, but there's one other criteria that needs to be met in order to get this thing to actually uh, become a uh, a breedable option, and that is it ha the leaf block that it is on has to be above a height of y of 80. Uh, sea level, I believe, is 64, so you're going to need to go up at least 16 in order to get this to be bred. It's a high up there tree. And on top of that, it's high up there again because it is a maximum of 19 tall. And there is some variation for it, but thankfully, most of the leaves are within the, uh, the, the range of not having to worry about... Maybe it's 5 is the... The, the radius for 
uh, detecting the log. I might be wrong on that four, but just to be on the safe side, uh, I I wouldn't cause any block updates if you don't want the outermost fringes to go poof. Uh, but the maximum width that you're going to expect from these uh, will be the five here, and that's what the trunk looks like. Again, it's a two by two trunk. And you can expect to get almost 50 logs out of each tree and about 24 saplings. So each one will give you, once you get four saplings, you'll be able to get six trees out of that and so on and so forth. Uh, and it will give you this hemlock wood, which is sort of a, a slightly more yellowish color than the birch, I want to say. Uh, but that's what the core of the logs look like. And there's the bark, and that's what the planks look like. And this one is a tier six tree as well uh, and they also do not grow all too densely next to each other you can see there's a lot of saplings left in this area <coughs> excuse me and finally for this branch we have the monkey puzzle hilarious name awesome name and it's actually got this I, I like this color. It reminds me of, I guess, like a desert or something. Um, but that's what the logs look like, the planks, and that's what the bark looks like. Uh, you'll be getting this pine wood, uh, but with the actual leaf blocks, it, it, it doesn't strike me as a sort of pine. It's, I don't know, it's sort of like a step or, or a dry tundra or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, once again, there's no nuts or fruit that you're going to get from this, and you'll get uh, about 48 and a half logs on average and 14.2 saplings. A little lower yield, but still a positive return. There's a lot of leaf blocks in there. Uh, the maximum width you're going to need to have for this is five from the outside of the logs, and the saplings are going to be uh, a two by two requirement to get it to grow and they can grow up to a maximum height of 16 blocks or 16 meters and uh, as you can see they can grow all the way out to the edge there uh, and this is once again an end of the line tree no new species are going to come from it and this is a tier 7 tree because it requires a tier 6 tree in order to be made but that is what the what a grove of them looks like. Uh, also, not too terribly dense. Slightly more dense than those because those are fluffier. But uh, it's it's a uh, it's a navigable forest if you want to turn them into a oh, butterfly. If you want to turn them into a forest. But that is going to be it for this episode and this branch of trees, the balsam fir branch. Uh, I hope this information was helpful. Uh, if oh, I almost forgot, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. The monkey puzzle requires the western hemlock and the jungle. I totally slipped my mind, I apologize. Anyway, uh, now I hope this was all helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or mockery for me forgetting things, please feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. Hopefully I will be able to catch it. Uh, the comments are, are not showing up in my email, my Google, or uh, any notifications through YouTube, so I still don't know how that's supposed to work. But if I catch it and I can answer it, I will do my best. If you... Uh, like this video and you like what I'm doing here, please feel free to give me a like. I do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my future stuff comes out, whether it's a uh, Let's Play series or another guide of some sort. If you have any idea for another guide you'd like to see me do, please leave me a message. I'll see if I can do it. Uh, also, one other thing, this map will be available for download so you can inspect it yourself. Uh, I will have a link in the description below for you uh, to download the map. At the far end over there towards the uh, sunset in the west, there is the Tree of Trees. I went over in the first episode of this series, and uh, it, sh it sort of shows you a little bit better detail on uh, how to go about your procedure for getting the different species uh, laid out and, and the planning for that. But I'm going to go ahead and cut off here, so thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.